Power Apps team has released a new interface for the Dataverse tables. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk through all of the new processes there. So we're going to talk about creating with Copilot, creating with Excel, creating from blank. We're even going to talk about creating virtual tables, which we've never talked about before. So we're going to hit all the buzzwords, get you all the cool things, but just help you guys understand better what your options are for creating Dataverse tables and how to do some of those advanced things that you might have done before that like they've now hidden the experience. Sound fun? Now let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. From the home screen of make.powerapps.com, we're just gonna go over here and we're gonna find tables. Now, mine shows up right here. For some reason you didn't, then you can maybe hit more, but I think tables shows up at the top for everybody. So we're gonna do tables. So that, remember tables here is just showing you the Dataverse tables in this particular environment. So we've got an interface down here to kind of see all of the tables that currently exist. We got a nice search box over here to find the tables. So if you wanna find all the Chewy ones, we can search for Chewy and then kind of break down the ones I put Chewy in the name. So pretty easy experience for finding tables. Now what's really new though is up here across the top, we've got four options. So describing the table. So if you use this particular option to create your new table, it's gonna let you use Copilot. Now you might be thinking, Shane, I think I've done this before. You're right. So remember, if you go here to the home screen and we're just start putting in words here, this helps us create a table with words using Copilot and then it spits out an app. The difference is when you're over here, this describe the new table is just going to build the table for you using words, but it's not going to put that extra app on top of it. So we just go here, we say describe the table. Now down here in the bottom right, it's like, hey, what do you want to do with this table? And so we might type in something like, please create me a table to track all of my Power Platform videos. And then we'll just hit enter. They've added this nice new little working on it experience. I think it just makes you know what's going on a little bit better. So you see the little blue line kind of moving around. And after a few seconds, you can see that it spits us out a table, right? It's got an ID column, a name, a description, a duration, and a link, right? So Copilot, right? This is Copilot using the large language model to be like, hey, he asked for this, I think he means this, and here are some good columns to get him started. Now, remember with all this, you know, the nice thing about this interface is you can work with it though. So I can go up here to edit table properties, and so I can see kind of what they've built for me. I can't work with that, but at least I can see it, right? The way this is set up, I think one day they're going to let us make changes, but not yet. So we cancel all that. But we can also be like, you know, I really wish there was another column for type of video. So we just go over here and say something like, will you please add a column for type of video? Make it a choice column, the options of full length or short, and we'll hit enter. Now notice I always say please and thank you because, well, I, I have manners and I'm afraid of the robot overlords. No, I just, I think it's just good practice. Uh, but also when you're worried about what to say, like just, Give it all the information, tell it too much. It'll yell at you. It'll not do things if you give it the wrong thing, right? But I see people like afraid. What's the worst it's gonna do? Say, no, I can't do that. So I just put in all what I wanted. And now if we scroll over here to the right, oh, there's now a type column. And if we do view column, you can see that there's a full length and a short option. So it did exactly what I wanted. So if we just cancel out of that, Maybe we want to add another column or another choice there. We could just tell it, please add a choice to that column for not sure. Also modify the sample data to use all the different choices, right? Because I don't like it when it just made all the types full length. Like that doesn't reinforce with my quickly that those are a choice column because I just see one option there. And look at that. It did it after a couple of seconds. And so this is something that I've improved over time, right? You know, I use Copilot enough that I've started to get more comfortable. I used to only ask it one very tight specific thing. Now I'm asking it two or three things in a sentence, right? And so far it's keeping up pretty well. I'm guessing it's got more processing power than I got up here. So, you know, it knows what's going on. So, but make sure that you're using it. You can also, you know, come in here, you could say something like, give me some suggestions. So let's just type that in down here. Thank you, give me some suggestions, please. And now it's gonna work on it. And it's gonna offer up some other column ideas. Now, speaking of columns, Keep in mind that the column types, most are supported, but some of your file column types are not. So that's all right. If they're not, we're gonna show you how to create those in a second. But right now, you know, we're gonna do it. Oh, and it basically ignored me. This happens sometimes. Let's just try dumbing it down. I'll just say, give me suggestions. Like that, so try again. There you go, this time, right? I guess all my pleases and thanks, you confused it. Um, that's the first time that hasn't worked, but that's one of the joys of using Copilot. Like it's not a fill in the blanks thing. Like sometimes it takes what you ask it and it doesn't understand, so it, does the wrong thing or doesn't do anything as like I just did there. But now I've got my suggestions and now you can see that it's given me some different ones. I could click on give me more suggestions um, or like if I click on add views column, then it's going to add that for me without me having to type all it in, okay? 
But just be cognizant of that. You can work with this manipulate to kind of get it where you want. And then once we're going to finish here in just a second, we're going to click create down there in the bottom. And with create, then we will, it will just make us this table. All right, so that finished, we scroll over, there's the views. This is good enough for me today. So we're just going to say create. And look, it drops you into the normal table interface. All right, I, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. This is a normal Dataverse table. So now if I wanted to add like a file column type, one of those other, you know, set up or look up relationship, all those things that it couldn't do with Copilot, I would just manually do those here because I, you know, there's nothing special this about this table. It was just an interface to help us create it with words, but now it's just a regular Dataverse table. So we built model driven apps on it, use it with power pages, use it in Canvas apps, add the columns, modify things. It's just a regular table, no big deal, right? So, and speaking of Dataverse, if that's your jam, then go check out our model driven class. It is model driven and Dataverse. It goes into Dataverse security, Dataverse column types, Dataverse solutions, all the Dataverse nerdiness that you need, whether you're building model driven apps or Canvas apps or even Power Pages, right? Good Dataverse foundational knowledge, it's all in that model driven class. So go check it out. Make sure that you're not overthinking that. It's just a table. So if we go back to tables here, we're just click tables right here. So that was describing the table, upload an Excel file. Once again, if you were to go to home and then here, if you said start with data and you were to choose upload an Excel file, this is an interface that we, and there's a whole video on it, right? But we take an Excel file and it turns it into a table and then turns it into an app. So what's different in this particular one is if we go back over here to our tables. So when we use upload an Excel file here, it's just going to create us a table. It's not going to create the app, right? So we'll just select one from my device. Look on my desktop, there is uh, doggy data. So it is using Copilot under the hood to analyze the data, it's finding the data in there. It's like, all right, I think this is a table. It's gonna give it, a, make up a name for it. It's gonna set the column names the way it feels, especially if you don't have column names. So it's, it's using Copilot to understand your data as best it can to put some defaults here. But remember, it being Copilot, you, it's up to you to be like, oh, I don't agree with that, right? Like I don't want the column name that or those type of adjustments, those are on you. You know, with mine, you can see it did a pretty good job. Like if I look here at first name though and say edit column. So if I didn't think that it should be first name, I want first space name and maybe we'll make the N lower. I don't know, right? So we can update these type of things. So, so this UI is different than the Copilot UI we used over there. Also notice you can't use words to manipulate this one. So you, you don't get that same editing capabilities. Where that can be a thing is say that you want to get rid of their preferred water here, right? So edit column. If you look through here, there is no delete column, okay? So if you did not want the preferred water column to be in the, uh, the table, you could do one of two things, right? One would be just to create it and then delete it, right? Using Dataverse, just stay in the tool. Or two, go shape your Excel file differently. If you're, if it's pulling in Excel and you're not, not happy with what it's pulling in, it's pulling in columns you don't want, you need to go edit that Excel or delete them after the fact, right? There's no edit in this experience for deleting the, the content out. It's also worth a reminder that this interface, like this dog record table does not exist right now. It will not exist until we hit create way down there in the bottom right hand corner. So it's still on you. This table is kind of sitting there in limbo right now. So like if I cancel out, then this would be like I never did this activity. That's just another mental note. Same with that copilot one. Until you say create, these tables don't exist. Okay, so over here you can see like it's telling you how many rows and columns it pulled in from the file. Um, and it can do very, very large Excel files. I don't know what the upper limit is, but I mean, I think it's hundreds of thousands, millions of rows. I don't know. It, it, it's a big number is what I'm told. I've not stressed it. And apparently like it'll create the table and it'll start kind of loading them in, in chunks in the background if you have a really large one, but I've not been down that one. There you go. So not a lot, right? You got Copilot to analyze your data, but you're not going to be able to use Copilot and manipulate. Like I hope at some point the two interfaces merge. I'd like to be able to use words right now. I'd like to be able to edit like I can here over on the other one, but it is what it is. So either way, you could hit create. We won't even bother, but that would make us that same table. It would just be a regular Dataverse table. You could edit it any way you wanted. All right, so let's cancel out of here. We even discard table, right? So it's telling me, hey, you're going to give up all that hard work you did. I know, it's okay. So that's the first two. Start with a blank table. This one, not super complicated, right? Like we've seen this interface a few different places. This first column, this will be your primary name column. Um, then here you're just gonna start adding columns. 
and then you've got the different options in the, the picker here. Notice you can create lookups and file types, right? So all of, I think all the column types are here. If there's any missing, I don't know what they are, but there, there might be. Um, but you can make all your different column types just by walking through here. Like I said, if you want to make a choice, you know, as soon as you choose choice, then it just goes to the bigger interface and you start filling in your choices right here. So uh, you have the ability to do these things and you can edit these columns after the fact, delete the columns, right? It's just a regular table. Um, you can enter the sample data as you go. If you edit table properties, you can control the names. The primary column is going to be that first column, so you can't change that here. Uh, you could also change the schema name if you're into those type of things. So not too crazy. Row ownership. Remember, when you create a table, you have to assign the row ownership. So either rows owned by a user or team or rows owned by an organization. So you've got to specify that now um, because you can't change that one after the fact, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, you can't change after the app is created. There you go. That's right. Um, so, but yeah, this is the same interface. Nothing special about this. This isn't even new, just a different screen to get to it. Okay. So we'll cancel out of this one. The fourth one over here, so create a virtual table. This is not something we've done before or talked about, but so the idea of a virtual table in Dataverse is it is a table that is connected to some other data source behind the scenes. Most specifically, our friend SharePoint or SQL. So when people ask me, how do I get my SharePoint data or my SQL data into a model-driven app or Power Pages, right? And the answer is always, well, you can't, it's just Dataverse. Well, remember, what you can do is you can come here and you can create a uh, Dataverse virtual table and that will talk to your SharePoint or SQL or Excel, I think is another one that's pretty common. Um, and so it'll talk to one of those behind the scenes. And so then now all the things you can do with a Dataverse table, because it is a Dataverse table, it just happens instead of storing it in a Dataverse, it's putting it back in a SharePoint. So you can read, write, update, as long as your data source supports it. Um, you know, let's just try this. We'll create a new SharePoint connection real quick. So new SharePoint. Connect directly, we'll say create my authentication stuff. So we'll just kind of click through this real quick. All right, now, oh, I guess I didn't really want to do that. All right, we are at the tables, create a virtual table. I hate that they dump you in the wrong spot. All right, so then there's the one we just created, I believe. And so then now what we're going to do is we'll say next. What SharePoint site do I want? Good old Power Apps videos, of course. Next, we'll search for EMP for a good old friend's employees. There they are, we'll say next. And now look, it's like, hey, here's all your columns. Here's what I'm gonna name them over um, in the Dataverse, right? So this is what it's called in SharePoint. This is what it's gonna call it here. Uh, you can set what is the primary field, boom, 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 boom. So all these things, so we're gonna just change this to VE1, right, for virtual employees one, because I already did a VE earlier and it blew up in my face, so hopefully this one works. <laughs> Who knows? We'll say next. And then now it's like, hey, this is what I'm gonna pull in. Great, we'll say finish. Now, if you hit edit configuration table, I was curious earlier, I hit it. It just takes you back to that screen we were just on. So there's nothing different there. So we'll say finish, womp womp. All right, something went wrong. So I've been having this problem, these virtual tables in my default environment that I use for all the videos. I think it's a me problem. I think, I don't know if it's something I did that SharePoint list or something I did to my environment. I think these have been all me. So I did just real quick make one. I did the same exact steps except for a different SharePoint list in a different environment and it works, right? So at this point, this is interacting directly with that SharePoint list. It's like if we came here and just did employee email and we'll just say DV at powerapps911.com for Dataverse, right? And then we click out of there. You can see it's saving. And as soon as this finishes, if we were to go open that SharePoint list right here, you can see that look, Favorite employees, there's DV, right? So it's a two-way thing. And if we just, you know, do a new one here and we'll call this SP at powerapps91.com, like so, we'll say save. And so now that we save this over here, if we jump back to Dataverse, and then I think if we'll go, I gotta refresh the data. So we'll say edit, and look at that, it's there. So it's a two-way street. So now if you said, hey, I wanna go build a model-driven app, great. You wanna build a Power Pages, great. All of those fun things. Now there are a bunch of limitations, like there's some column limitations, there's some data size limitations. There's a bunch of rules that go with virtual tables, right? They are not the most elegant thing ever. So make sure you go check out Microsoft's documentation if you start to you know, bang your head against the wall with virtual tables. Also, you know, we talked about SharePoint and SQL. 
Um, there's also this virtual connection provider, so you can build your own and start to bolt in that way. So if you wanted to talk to a different data source with a virtual table, it's possible. It's way over my head, but I know it's possible. Okay, so let's just close all that. So anyway, I don't know why mine's breaking. We're not going to overthink it. We're just, we showed you what one looked like. I did a little more testing, and it looks like it's the employees table. So I tried employees over in the environment. It didn't work either. So something weird about my employees table, it's got a lot of different columns. I know some of them are unsupported. So I guess instead of saying, hey, your unsupported columns, unsupported, that's what's messing it up. I don't know, I probably need to dig deeper. Maybe I should do a whole video on virtual tables. But either way, you and that more simplified list, I didn't have any issues. Employees, it's broken. Who knows? Okay, now, other things that are worth noting. So if you hit the drop down here, so like add columns and data, right? So like these are the things you've already seen. Set advanced properties. So this is here if you wanted to create a new table, but you want to be able to specify all these options going forward, like you kind of did in right, the old way, basically. Really though, most of these options can be changed after the fact. The things you were really going to come here for if you want to do a different type, so standard activity, virtual, or elastic table. So if you want to create, you know, change that, you've got to change that up front because you can't change that about a table after the fact. So that's the type. The same with the who the ownership is, so whether you're using user, team, or organization. You'd have to change that up front. But all of this stuff, like the image, all these checkboxes, the attachments, all of that can be changed later. Primary column, same thing. It's just the first column. So I don't really think this is a big deal, but if you were really annoyed that you couldn't modify that, you know, you'd do this. So this would just create you a table the old way using these settings. If you want to change one of these settings after the fact, so remember we just created that one for Power Platforms videos, right? So we'll search for Power, Power Platform videos. I would click the ellipses here, and then I would go down here to properties. And so now look, there's where you turn on attachments. There's the grayed out fields that we talked about. You can't change after the fact, but all the rest of this stuff, you can see it's all ready to rock and roll, right? Primary row image, there's no image columns. That's why that's grayed out. Over here, you can't change any of these. So you wouldn't need to set that up correctly to begin with. But for the most part, especially if you're newer to this stuff, like. This stuff is not, you're not worried about it. So I don't think you're gonna to have to do too much with this, but set advanced properties, this would be the way to do it if you just want all the bells and whistle controls like you used to always have. Also notice with the table selected here, we get a bunch of different options here. Those are the same things that are showing up in the ellipses. I'm not gonna go through all those. On the import side, so import data from Excel. So if you wanted to have it, you know, give it an Excel spreadsheet and make it kind of like you did here, just the old experience. Import data, this is the old data flow experience, right? This is gonna open up Power Query, and so now you can tell it, hey, I wanna go use an access database or some OData or you know all of these crazy things, right? So Power Query where you can connect to a data source, pull it in, transform the data to create yourself a table. So that is there, we're not gonna go through that. That is also something, I don't wanna say it's over my head, but it's not something I do a lot of, but there's a lot of options here if you are trying to pull in other data sources. And then on the export side, so whether you want to go open up the Dataverse table in Power BI or export one of your Dataverse tables into um, an Excel file, right? So it's export data. You basically would just go choose your Dataverse table and it's going to go shove it all in an Excel file that you can then go do whatever it is you want to do in Excel. There you go. So, all right, so now we can just go find like our Chewy table, Chewy tracker. Scroll back up here. It's a great interface. And then we'd say export data. And so then now it's just going to spit us out an Excel file with all my Chewy data in it. So. so there's a lot that you can do here with your Dataverse tables. There's, you know, a lot of these UIs are still evolving. As you can see, we kind of have some old stuff, some new stuff mixed in. It's been the state of Dataverse for a couple of years. It probably will be for the next couple of years, right? Dataverse is Microsoft constantly investing in it and growing it and doing it. But I think that's everything we've got for today. Questions, comments, ideas, would love to hear them, right? This Dataverse stuff, I know we need to do Lots of it, right? Because Dataverse is becoming more and more popular. So hit me up with what you'd like to see. Maybe we need to do a whole video on virtual tables. I don't know. Um, also, you know, if Dataverse is your jam, right, in model-driven apps, so we have a whole training class on that. So if you go over to training.powerapps911.com, we've got a model-driven class that is on demand, or we are teaching a live version of it, uh, usually about once a quarter as well. So if you want to take that class live, or you can come take my live class on Power Apps and Canvas Apps. Yeah! You know, not as much Dataverse as that class has 50% Dataverse, whereas my class has like 5% Dataverse, maybe 10. So with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.